Bibles real quick. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to go ahead and, and do a little bit more preaching. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to take long. I say that every week. Praise the Lord. And so just hang on. Just hang on. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 10. Quickly. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 30 through 37. We are on a series that is called Give Thanks. It's the month of November and um, it's a month of thanksgiving. And so we have assigned all these Sunday morning services to give thanks to the Lord and to focus on thanksgiving. Here we begin on verse 30, Luke chapter 10. The Bible says, Jesus replied with a story. He says, a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. But when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. What a guy. A temple assistant or a Levite, walked over and looked at him lying there. But he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds and with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to, the, to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I will pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would, would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. And the man replied, the one who showed, his mercy, showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, yes. Now go and do the same. Father, one more time, we thank you, we bless you, we give you praise. Have your way today. Touch our hearts 
and allow us to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody says amen. And amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. This last week, I spoke with you about uh, the story about the ten uh, lepers who, who saw Jesus and they were suffering, they were in pain, and how the ten lepers cried out from a distance and they cried out to Jesus and said, Jesus, we want to get healed. And, and how Jesus spoke to them and said, go show yourself to the priest. And uh, the Bible says that when they were on their way, while they were on their way to see the priest, uh, they were healed. That's what the Bible says. And we talked about that a little bit. And I want to, even for the rest of you that, that were not here last week, I want to just real quickly go over the three points that I gave everybody. First of all, Thanksgiving comes from having the right perspective. You remember that. Thanksgiving would come into your heart when you have the right perspective about God, about things. Jesus healed the ten men who, who, who were there asking for a healing. And uh, the Bible tells us that only one out of those ten came back to give him thanks. Right? And uh, this man had the right perspective. This man had the right thinking, had the right understanding. And so because of that, he came back. And, of course, the right perspective means this, that it could be a lot worse than what it is. In other words, you know, we got to be thankful to the Lord because we have the right perspective. The right perspective is that there's no reason to complain about our situation today. If you look around the world, there's always people worse off than you are. And they're not complaining. Hello, somebody. So it is important to have the right perspective. When you have the right perspective, you can't help it but to begin to cultivate an attitude of gratitude, being thankful for where you are, what God is doing in your life. Maybe you're not where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. You are on your way. And so you got to be thankful for what God is doing, what God has done in your life. Secondly, thanksgiving is not a divine suggestion, but a command from God. Thanksgiving is something that God expects from every one of us as we get to know Jesus. Luke 17, 17 says, Jesus says, we're not all ten cleansed. Where are the other nine? Jesus was expecting for all of them to come back, all ten lepers who got healed. Jesus was expecting all ten of them to come back to him and give him thanks. But it was only one that came back. So in other words, there was an expectancy and there is an expectancy from the Lord for us to be thankful and grateful unto Him for everything that is done. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18, I believe the Apostle Paul, he speaks about this when he says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He's simply spelling out what Jesus is saying. He said that in every situation, in every, he says, give thanks in all circumstances. He's not just saying when things are going well in your life, make sure you give thanks to God. When you're being blessed, make sure you give thanks to God. He says in all circumstances. I think that, 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 that a great majority of what he's talking about there, he is really leaning on the difficult times. I think he's really including, really concentrating and trying to bring out a truth and saying, hey, when you're going through the difficult times, make sure that you still give thanks. Make sure that you still have time to give thanks to the Lord. Not just in your good times. Praise the Lord. And number three, we talked about Thanksgiving opens doors of permanent security. Thanksgiving, an attitude of Thanksgiving opens the doors for permanent security. In Luke 17 and verse 19 of the same story, then Jesus said to him, to the one that came back, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. And the nine of them, we talked about this, nine of them that didn't come back got healed. Only one of them came back out of the ten. So nine that got healed, when they saw that they were healed, they just went and began to uh, go and enjoy their family who they could not see for a long time. They could go back to their family because they were not lepers anymore. They were not lepers no more. So they could go and enjoy the blessings that God had given them. But that one made a U-turn and came back. Hello, somebody. The one came back and says, hey, oh, enjoying everything that God has made possible for me can wait a little bit. I got to go first and give thanks to the one that made it possible for me. Come on, somebody. Somebody is getting it. Somebody understands that. So Jesus said to him, the one that came back, he says, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. 
we, we, we brought out the word well. Your faith has made you well. The word well in Greek is zoso. Z-O-S-O. And it means to save, deliver, rescue, preserve. It really, it really means eternal salvation. The one that came back not only got healed on the outside, but Jesus made sure that this man started a relationship with him that was eternal. Jesus says, when he says, your faith has made you well, Jesus just simply making a statement, now there's a connection between me and you, and nothing can take you out of my hands. You are going to be saved for eternity from this moment on because you came back and there's something inside of you that is making that connection with who I am, God Almighty, the Lord of our salvation. See, the other nine didn't come back. The other nine just got healed on the outside, but they never got healed on the inside. The one that came back got healed all the way around. Come on now. That's good stuff. So we need to learn from these individuals who are leprosy, especially the one that came back. Now, in the Bible, as I, st as I start my message today, and, 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 and again, I'm going to keep it short, but straight to the point. In the Bible, gratitude is best expressed by those who acknowledge their great level of sin or their condition, and, even, and, even, and the even greater level of grace that they have freely received. I'm going to say that again. In the Bible, as you read it, in the Bible, gratitude or thankfulness is best expressed by those who acknowledge their great level of sin or their condition and the even greater level of grace that they have received by God. There are some people that never acknowledge the great uh, level of sin or the condition they were in when God gave them grace. There's some people that believe that that's by chance. You would talk to people and say, God saved me from this. Nah, it wasn't really. I talked to somebody at the prison, and he was trying to argue with me that that, 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 that day I told him a little story about, about a demon-possessed lady that came into our church when I was in Hayward, and we prayed for her, and what happened, and how the demon came out of her in a form of vomiting. That, that, a vomiting, that, that's, that's how it happens usually. And so he was, he was arguing with me. That it was in the name of Jesus, and maybe she had done drugs before she came, and now he was just, he was just trying to put it like, like, can I tell you something? You don't need to argue these things. You need, you, some people argue that, no, it was a chance, it was by chance, it was this and that and the other. But I can tell you something. People who acknowledge the great level of sin and desperation that they had in their lives are usually the people that become very grateful. For what God has done in their lives. And, and I'm going to go a little deeper on that. But I leave it at that for now. But in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 17. This is what the Apostle Paul says. 1 Timothy 1, 17 he says. This is a trustworthy saying. And everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. The Apostle Paul was making a statement and says, you know, I know that Jesus Christ came to this world to save sinners, but I want to let you know that I happen to be the worst of everybody in the whole world. Can you imagine when somebody makes that claim? I'm the worst of it. You know, Charles Manson has nothing on me. Hello, somebody. It just simply a way inside of the individual that acknowledges how difficult, how impossible, how bad they were. When you read God's word, when you, when you know what God's standards are, you begin to acknowledge, I was way off. I could never get this thing right on my own. It was impossible for me to get this thing right. 
when you begin to acknowledge what God has done in your life, then you have the same perception as the Apostle Paul. I can tell you right now that I could speak right there with the Apostle Paul, and I can say amen to that, but not about the Apostle Paul. When I begin to look at my own life, I begin to become and accept what the Apostle Paul was saying about himself. I can say it about myself. Can I tell you something? Jesus Christ came to this world to save and to be able to save sinners of of which I am the worst one of all come on now when you begin to see yourself that you was in trouble that you was a bad boy that there was something ugly in your life but Jesus Christ gave you grace and made it possible then you begin to cultivate a spirit of gratitude within your life come on somebody need to give him praise Some people, you go minister to them, and you see them, and this happens all the time. We go minister to them, and you can see. Uh, it just happened the other day. I went to Walgreens, Walgreens, right, right over by my, by my house. And I went, and I saw a guy right outside, and he, you know, young guy. And uh, I went to him, and I said, hey, how you doing? I want to invite you. I, I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm cool, man. I'm cool. I said, all right. God bless you. God bless you. I went to Walgreens. And I came back out. And when I, I came back out and I'm walking to my car, I look to the left. He's asking for money to this lady that came out. He, 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 was, he was begging for, for a few dollars. Because he didn't have, because whatever his situation, all that stuff. But he will not accept God's love. He will not accept the one that can fix him from the inside out. It happens all the time. It's the perception of the person, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. You know a lot of people like that. Just look in the mirror. <laughs> Sometimes we don't accept. Sometimes we don't accept. God wants to do something in our lives. And, and sometimes for some reason, I, well, I'm not that bad. Yes, you are real bad. We were real bad. We were terrible before we accepted Jesus. Hallelujah. But one day, the grace of, because the Bible says, with the word sin abounds, the grace of God much more abounds, much more greatly abounds. Can I tell you something? We were bad, but Jesus, Jesus was good, and he is good, and his mercies endure forever is a good God but you are able to see the expression of thanksgiving through individuals all throughout the Bible those who have acknowledged the level of their sin the great level of sin but then also they are able to see that God's grace is even greater than the sin that once had them bound it is important for all of us to see that in our lives See, in Luke 7, 41 through 47, the Bible says, it says, then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people. 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces of silver to another. But neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon or Simeon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the largest debt. That's right, Jesus says. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust of my feet, but she was washing them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came into your house, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare, rare perfume. Rare perfume it simply means she spent a whole year's wages buying this, and now she's pouring it on Jesus. She spent a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of time, money, effort, everything into doing this to him. He says, check it out. Then the, he, the, 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 this is the breaker right here. He says, I tell you, he says, her sins, I tell you her sins. Uh, let me see. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, hello, have been forgiven. 
So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Oh. Again, is there a great sin and a small sin? No. All sin is the same. Meaning that no matter what type of sin in your life, you and I were missing heaven altogether. And we're hitting hell right in the center. What does that mean, Pastor? You and I were going straight to hell without Jesus. But I was never a drug addict or a prostitute. Or, no, 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 no. All sin is the same. Did you ever steal a, 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 a gum at the store? How about a pencil from school? All right, that's enough. You, 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 you didn't make it to heaven. Yep. You don't need to be all bad and all of that stuff to say you're a sinner or that you need God's grace. All of us need it, except some people think that, well, you know, my, my thing was not that bad. And so because of that, the level of gratitude is not there. Oh, I, I got a little deeper now over here, man. I'm going to call you out by name. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. God is simply saying, look, somebody who understands and acknowledges that their sin was so great in their lives and they have received grace for all of their sins is somebody who is going to walk this walk, this, this walk of faith with a sense of gratitude and thankfulness in their lives, and they're going to show it every step of the way. Why? Because they acknowledge that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the grace of God. I wouldn't be enjoying my family and my children if it wasn't for the grace of God. I wouldn't be healthy as I am today if it wasn't for the grace of God. I wouldn't be battling this sickness with a positive attitude and faith and courage if it wasn't for God that is with me even in the midst of my illness God is a good God but somebody that acknowledges that will be a grateful person come on somebody need to give him praise we need to acknowledge the depth of our sin in the grace of God that is much greater than any of our sins. No matter what it is or what it was. The Apostle Paul says, Jesus Christ came to this world. And then he says, he came to save sinners. And then, he's, and then he goes on and then he says, of which I'm the worst of them all. Wow. But I, I, I like I like, I like what he says here. I like what he says. He says, when he begins that, 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 that statement, this is what he says. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Was he really talking about everyone should accept that me, the Apostle Paul, is the worst one of all people in the world? Or is he talking about everyone should accept that they are the worst sinners of the world? Individually. Pray. <laughs> because that's what God spoke to me. That the Apostle Paul, this is really, really, really twofold. Twofold in that he is making a statement that he's the worst of everybody. But then he says, everybody, everyone should accept this. Accept what? That you are the worst one? Okay, the Apostle Paul was like, we accept it. Everyone should accept it. I don't think he was talking about Paul being at the center of this, he was really putting everybody in the center individually. He said, everyone should accept that they are the worst sinners of everybody else in the world. And when you are able to accept that, then you're able to accept God's grace, then you'll be walking with gratitude. But if you don't have that understanding, that acknowledgement that you, that you needed God's grace, you won't show gratitude to him. That's what happened with the nine that were able to walk away. 
But the other one says, hey, wait a minute. This wouldn't happen unless this man touched me. Everything is possible. Oh, I can go with my family. I can go with my children. I'm healed now. I was kept away from them because of my illness. I cannot go and enjoy everything that God has made possible for me until I go and I give them thanks and I show my gratitude because he made it all possible for me. That's the attitude of gratitude. Somebody who says, yes, I was worse. I was was bad i was terrible it was impossible but the grace of god touched my life and now i can say i am free because of what god has done in my life come on somebody need to give him thanks this morning we are a grateful people because of what god has done in our lives you see real quickly people who possess an attitude of gratitude number one do not ignore people with pain. People who possess an attitude of gratitude just do not ignore people with pain. They don't. We read the story about the Good Samaritan at the very beginning. See, Jesus replied with a story. He says a Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem to, down to Jericho and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and let him have dead, left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw that the man was lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant or a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, unwanted person, the, uh, the outcast of society. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and uh, bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. There was, there was, they said there were 17 miles that he walked on foot. Well, this man who was hurt was, was riding on his donkey. 17 miles. He put the man who was hurting. Took him 17 miles to, to, to put him in, in, in a hotel, in a place where he could stay. Because he was hurting. And then Jesus, at the end of the story, he, 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 he says this. He says, do likewise or be like him. Jesus is pointing to the attitude of this Samaritan. And he's saying to his disciples and he's saying to every one of us, listen, when you see the attitude that this man uh, uh, had in his life, I want you to copy him. I want you to be like him. Because even though, listen, even though he's not a Jew, he's not a chosen person, he is one who is operating and bringing out the attitudes that I would want my church to have. The attitude of gratitude. See, people who possess an attitude of gratitude do not ignore people with pain. The other ones, they walked to the other side or, or across the street. You see, you and I must never walk away from someone who deserves our help. Your hand and my hand is God's hand for that person at that time. This Samaritan was God's hand to an individual who was hurting at that time. But the priest, the Levite, those that knew the scriptures... Walk to the other side, close their eyes to the need of that person who was hurting. Hello, somebody. See, the good Samaritan did not ignore people with pain. The priest and the Levite looked at the hurting man and without con conviction just walked away. He was bleeding, lonely, in pain, and they simply walked away. Let that not be said about Victory Outreach. Let that never be said about our church, our ministry, about us. Let that never be said. Because why? Because we know the struggles outside. We know the pain that people go through. Why? Because we walk in their shoes. Because we were there once. And because of that, a person who is grateful and has an attitude of gratitude will never neglect or despise somebody who is in pain at the time. You will go out of your way to meet the need of somebody who is hurting. That's what Victory Outreach is all about. That's the only reason why God sent us to this side of the bay. 
so that we can see the need. There's a lot of need. There's a lot of hurting people all throughout the North Bay. And God has brought us, you and I, together so that we can go as the good Samaritan. And we will not close our eyes to the people who are in need and in pain. But instead of that, that we will be an extension of God here in the North Bay and be able to touch the people at the highways and the byways and let them know that there is healing in the name of Jesus. There's restoration in the name of Jesus. God is able if we're able to go and be an extension of God. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. Be careful, my friend, that you don't lose your conviction to help the hurting. The Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted. And so, and so should we be close to those who are hurting. They labored at the temple. They knew the scriptures. And they felt no compassion. They simply walked to the other side and neglected to help that individual in pain. Can I tell you something? Jesus says, ah, don't even look at those guys. Look at the Samaritan. He, he, he is the one that, that went out of his way to meet the need of this individual who was hurting. See, somebody who's got an attitude of gratitude would do that. Understand, it's a part of who we are. That we, we help people in pain. There's a beautiful song that says, I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Hello? I wonder how many here in Victory Area Santa Rosa can truly sing that song. Not only sing that song, but live that song. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Can I tell you something? God has included you in His plan to mend broken people. Oh, come on. You and I were broken. You and I were messed up. You and I were towed up from the flow up, somebody said. But can I tell you something? God, after he touches your life and my life, he builds us up so that we can become the instruments that he can use for his honor and glory. Who else would go to the highways, the byways, the prisons? Who else would go and let them know that there is hope in Jesus Christ unless somebody who has experienced the power of God in their life. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. Be careful. Say that prayer. Live that life. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. That's why I get so blessed when I hear testimonies as the testimonies that, that were brought forth this morning. Number two. People, again, people who possess an attitude of, of gratitude care enough to get involved. They care enough to get involved. The Samaritan was different. The Bible clearly states that the Samaritan felt compassion for this man. In spite of being a Samaritan. Rejected, disrespected, undermined by the Jews. Yet, he went and helped a Jew. Hello! The level of compassion was greater than the level of hate towards this man. He cared enough to cross the street. He cared enough to get off his donkey. He cared enough. To clean the blood and the wounds of that dying man. He cared enough to pick up this man and put him on his own donkey because he couldn't walk. He cared enough to walk so many miles on foot with the man on his donkey. He cared enough to get involved. An attitude of gratitude would always be tagging at your heart. Somehow I can do something for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What is it that God would want me to do? He already touched me. So now I got to go and I got to be an extension. I got to be the hand. I got to be the mouthpiece for a God who loves me. He showed me mercy. Now I'm going to go. And as I have received mercy, I'm going to give mercy to somebody else. There's people who are waiting out there. 
And you know what? They got your name on it. Because God called you and he knows that you are the perfect person that can go and reach and touch those individuals with God's love and God's grace. Come on, somebody need to give them praise this morning. There's some people I cannot even talk. I cannot even touch. They will not receive it from me. But God saved you. God touched you. You're the only one that can go to the place of employment. You're the only one that can go into your business office. You're the only one. Because some Somebody is going to hell, but God saved you and God touched you so that the mercy that you have received, you give it to somebody else. Come on, somebody need to get radical for Jesus. That's why this church is here. There's no other reason why this church exists. That's the reason why we exist. That's the reason why we're here. God is giving us a great level of grace and compassion. It's not just so that we're so blessed. Woo! How wonderful. It's to show our gratitude. To not neglect people that are in pain now. To bring them. To help them. To pray for them. To show them the way. To get the Bible. To teach them what God says. What God expects from them. To teach them. To be accountable. To be faithful to the Lord. To teach them how is it that God wants to prosper them and bless their lives. There's steps and there's things and there's, there's a certain way, a system that God has established. Many people don't know that. You know it. You're learning it. As you learn it, we'll give it to somebody else. They need it. They want to be set free as well. See, Jesus told a story to them and then he says, be like him. Be like him. He's telling this story and said, this is what happened. This is what happened. Two of them came by and, and then they crossed the street and they left. They closed their eyes and they just walked like nothing was happening. But this Samaritan, he came by. He saw. He had compassion. He got off his donkey. He went across. He, he, he cleaned them up real good. And then he, he picked them up, put them on his donkey. And then he took them and he walked right next to them. And he took them and he took care of him. Be like him. Be like him. This is what Jesus said. Exactly that. Do likewise. Be like him. Jesus loved that, that attitude of this man. Even though he wasn't a Jew. He says he's an outsider. He's, a, he's an outcast of society. Jews don't even talk to these kind of people. Because they see them their low lives. But I want to tell you that that low life. Had an attitude of gratitude. He had an attitude that I want in every one of my sons. Every one of my daughters. That attitude you need to imitate. You need to go after that. You need to do exactly like he did. You need to get out of your way. You need to get involved. You need to do that. And you need to not neglect those that are in pain all around you. Come on. God wants to create a revival in the North Bay. It's not going to happen until we're shaken up and say, we are going to do what God has called us to do. Come on, somebody need to give him praise. We have to care enough to get involved. You're not involved in helping people. There's something wrong with the type of Christianity that we claim to have. Jesus is about reaching people. Thirdly, either some of you are going to love me or some of you are going to hate me. Thirdly, people who possess an attitude of gratitude are willing to give of their finances to see their hurting restored. Oh, now you're talking, Pastor. I don't like this area. It's always going to take some kind of sacrifice from you and me to reach those who are hurting. The Bible says there in the same story, Luke 10, 33 to 35, Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn. 
where he took care of him. The next day, listen, the next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, his own money, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than these two coins, I will pay you the next time I come through here. This man didn't know that guy. But he wasn't afraid to pull out his wallet and say, I want this guy to be restored. Do whatever you got to do so that you take care of him. And I know that you're going to charge him for staying here and sleeping well instead of out there in the cold. I know that the rehab home is going to cost a little bit. But it's okay. I don't even know this man. In fact, he was probably one of the guys, one of the Jews that was coming against me and calling me all kinds of names. But because I belong to God, come on now, because I belong to God, I'm willing to help him. I'm willing to even put a little bit of money out there to be able to help this man who did, does not like me at all. But I don't care about that. I'm being faithful to the one that called me. Come on. I'm being faithful to the one that called me. See, he says... Take care of this man. And if his bill runs higher than these two silver coins that I'm giving you, if it's more than this, I will pay you when I come back. Just go ahead and write it down. I'll take care of the bill. See, we need to understand that this is war. Come on now. This is war. I mean, this, some strange things are happening in the world today. Some strange things are happening in the world today. And I can tell you that Jesus is getting closer and closer to coming back and take his people home. And I want to let you know that if there was a time to fight and to, and to expand and to reach people, if there was a time, it is now. This is the time when we got to go out to the highways, the byways, to let the people know that Jesus is God Almighty, that Jesus brings restoration and healing. And more than anything else, he brings salvation to our souls. There's a whole world that live in fear outside of these walls. God has called our ministry. God has called our church. And I pray this morning that you will be the kind of individual who says, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really look deep into my life, my walk with God. And I'm going to ask God to show me these areas of my life. I, I don't want to neglect what God called me to do. I, I, I need to get more involved in doing what God called me to do. I need to open my eyes big to see clearly the pain of those who are hurting. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to show me that even when they're smiling on the outside, many of them are crying on the inside. God, would you show me the pain of people around me? So that I can be an instrument that you can use for your honor and glory. That's what God wants to do in all of our lives if we're sensitive to what he wants to do. God wants to do it in our lives. I wonder how many of us will really show an attitude of gratitude. I pray that all throughout this month we will continue to cultivate an attitude of gratitude that is not going to last for November alone. But for the rest of our lives. I pray that in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a good praise. I want you to stand to your feet. I want you to stand to your feet. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Nobody, nobody moving around. Just give us, uh, we want to spend a little bit of time with God, a little time of prayer. Come on, just, just stand up and lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord right now. Right now, just, just begin to ask the Lord, God, teach me to be grateful. Maybe some of you were, were really uh, maybe even complaining a little bit about some things in your life. Maybe some of the things that you have experienced lately were, were, were not that pleasant to you. And you begin to just point out and say, God, you know, why? God. Some of you maybe are a little fearful of some things that are happening in your life. Maybe you got to make some decisions and you're at the crossroad of making decisions and you're afraid. I can tell you that Jesus wants to guide you and lead you in a way everlasting. In a way that 
is going to bring peace to your mind and your heart and your soul. God wants to give you wisdom and understanding if you allow Him this morning. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus, as you lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift up your hands. God is here. God is here, sir, ma'am. God is here. And He knows the condition of your life. He knows the struggles in your mind. He knows what you go through. Young person, Jesus knows exactly what you're going through. And you know His prayer? Cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Cultivate that attitude of gratitude. Understand that without me, Jesus says, you can never accomplish.